Hey everybody, it's Martine from Matthew Studio Equipment coming to you from my backyard and we want to thank you guys for all your wonderful questions. We just posted a little video yesterday asking for your input. What do you want to know about? What do you want to hear about? If you wanted to ask a DP something, a key grip, a gaffer, please put it in our comments section and we'll reach out to, to our wonderful family of Matthews and all of our friends and we'll get your questions answered. In this case, David Rodriguez was asking a question towards DPs saying, as a DP, when you show up at a location, an exterior, and you're trying to plan your day and you're scouting, what are the things to keep in mind? What are the most important things as a DP that you need to take account of? The first person we asked is a great guy named Grant Smith. He has shot really funny TV, a lot of cool stuff. He was a DP on Workaholics, on Tacoma FD. He shot Ghosted. Uh, he shot Game Over Man wonderful resource and an awesome guy to work for, mostly because he came up as a grip. Anyhow, the question uh, was posed to him and he said, the most important thing, and you're gonna get this from a lot of DPs, gaffers, key grips, the first thing to keep in mind is where does the sun rise and where's it gonna set? That's extremely important for exteriors. You need to know where the sun's gonna be in orientation to the angles that you wanna shoot. So there's a lot of apps, there's a lot of you know different methods to figuring out the path of the sun. I use one called Sun Seeker. It's an app and it'll show you where the sun's going to rise at what time, where it's going to set and where it's going to be throughout the day. It'll give you the path of the sun throughout the whole day. And you can even look ahead two months in the calendar or wherever you want, whenever your, your expected shoot date is going to be for that location. You can see, you know, in two months on that Thursday at three o'clock, the sun will be so and so right here, right there. Anyhow, once he figures that out, he really starts thinking about the angles of the scene, what he needs to shoot and where the sun's going to be in the orientation to that. What he prefers to do, which is what a lot of people do, is he tries to shoot on the contrast side of the sun, which means you're going to keep the sun as your backlight or as your side light. With this in mind, it takes a long time to shoot a scene. So he realizes that one or two angles are going to end up a little bit more front lit. You know, the sun's going to come around and it's going to be a little bit more frontal. In that case, he starts to think about his options. One of them being the grip solution. You got to put an overhead over him, some sort of diffusion overhead to kind of bring it down and, uh, and explore the possibilities of where he's going to position that, where he's going to position that gear and what he's going to need in order to do that. The other really important thing is to schedule his shots in that order so that he knows that the important shots that he needs to have that sun you know, backlighting or side lighting his subject, those are the ones he's going to need to schedule so that he's able to get that. And then he's going to try to pick the other angles that are going to do a little bit better with a little bit of grip help over top. So that was a really great question and a really great answer from Grant. We asked another DP, dear friend of mine, awesome guy. He also has a background in grip. Surprise, surprise. You're talking to a grip here. You're talking to Matthew's grip equipment. So uh, this guy's name is Dave Newbert. He is such an intelligent guy, so much fun to work for. I was a key grip on a movie he shot named Marfa Girl out in Marfa, Texas, in Alpine, Texas. We had a wonderful time doing it, and it was all location work, tons of exteriors. Uh, he's shot a whole bunch of other stuff. He shot a feature named Boomtown, The Suffering. Uh, she's Just a Shadow that just came out recently. He shot that. And guys, no one told me my glasses were so crooked. It might be my ears. But anyhow, he uh, just shot a film called Alone that he's really excited about. Uh, so yeah, Dave Newbert, we asked him the same question and he came back to us with some wonderful answers. The first thing that he said right away, I need to know the sunrise, the sunset, and I need to know the path of the sun. It's something that you're, you're going to hear from a lot, of, a lot of DPs, a lot of shooters. He also tries to really pay attention to all the angles he wants to shoot and what's the background. If you're gonna be looking at a person coming in a room, you know, you gotta look through that doorway, what's in the background? Look deep and, ooh, look, I left my silk right there. Ah, coming back. So he really tries to, to pay, keep in mind what's in the background of all the angles that he wants to shoot. That's a really important thing. You're trying to compose the shot, compose the frame, Every little thing's gonna play an element in that. So the, the path of the sun, the background of all his angles, something else that he really keeps in mind, and I think this also has to do with him coming up as a grip, is that he wants to know if that location is viable to get the appropriate, appropriate equipment to. If you're gonna be shooting on a rooftop, 
with really limited access to being able to get all your gear up there, you have to keep that in mind. You can't expect that you're gonna be shooting on a rooftop on a windy day in the middle of the day and you're gonna be able to get a whole bunch of overhead silks and all this and all that. It's just not gonna work. Uh, so that's a really, really good pointer. You gotta think about how realistic it is to get the proper equipment to the location that you're gonna shoot. Uh, something else that he said is, can he contain the scene enough to cover it? And if not, how can he use uh, the best position of the sun and the, or light placement to be able to accomplish that? You know, you try to contain a scene, but if it goes all over a location and all of a sudden you're starting to shoot all over the place, how can you best use the position of the sun and your light placement uh, to be able to accomplish what you're trying to get done? Another pointer that he wanted to, to put out there that he thinks about all the equipment that is gonna be needed for the scene and also, this one's really, really insightful. Where are you gonna stage the gear? When you get there and you want all the gear in the world, but you're gonna be shooting in every direction, where are we gonna put the gear? If you're gonna see everywhere, we need to have somewhere as grips, as electricians, as camera department, as sound, as a whole company that takes all these people to shoot this. They're, they're all, if it's a scene with two people in it, guess what? They're surrounded by a hundred other craftspeople who are trying to hide their gear from the camera. So it's a DP and an intelligent one coming from the crew side. Uh, he really wants to know where are people going to stage their stuff? Where's Video Village going to go? Is this going to be possible to get all the grip equipment, all the lighting equipment up here, out here, over to here, and keep it out of the shot without having to dance everything all over the place all day long? Sometimes it happens. Sometimes it's what we have to do. But as a thoughtful guy, you really try to to give a little bit of assistance to the crew in, in order to let them know where they're gonna be able to stage their gear safely. Something else that he takes into account, now that I'm done yelling about where I'm gonna put my gear, is he wants to know what practical lights and what practical light sources already exist in this location. Are there street lights? Is there a big neon sign? How can he accentuate those existing practicals or how can he he used those practicals as motivation for the rest of his lighting, whether it be that neon sign. You're going to want to bring something that's going to replicate that same color, that same vibe, and use that to light your scene. That same street light. Are you going to need to, if you're going to be seeing all these street lights in your shot, then are you going to need to be able to use gel, use a, a light panel that is going to be able to give you that same color to be able to use in your scene? Another very, very wonderful tidbit from Dave Newbert. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Grant. Thank you, uh, Mr. Rodriguez, for your wonderful question and keep them coming. We're really excited to to answer all your questions and, uh, and it's fun for us. And I uh, wanted to thank you from Matthews University. Matthew, right back here in my backyard. More to come.